So Blender version 4.5 was just recently released, and if you'd like to learn about all the new features and updates, then you can check out this page here on Blender's website, link is in the video description. But in this video, I wanted to show you the new light settings in Blender version 4.5. So if you go to the add menu and go down here to light and add any light object, there's gonna be some new settings in the light properties. So if you just select the light and then click right over here to go to the object data properties, you can see we have a few new light options. And then also here is my ultimate blender procedural material pack. And I'm just gonna add in this extreme rusty metal material so that we have a nice material to kind of demo the light with. So the first new feature that they've added is this really cool temperature value. So I can check mark the temperature to turn it on. And then I can drag around this value to change the temperature. So you can see if I turn the temperature to a larger value, it's going to be kind of this bluish tint. So this kind of reminds me of like a fluorescent tube light, something that might be in like a warehouse or a garage. Then if you turn the temperature down, you can see it's going to become more of a warm light. And so this reminds me of some type of like indoor bedroom lamp or also a sunlight because it is more warm. Now, if you have the temperature value turned off, you can of course just change the color here so you could make it more blue or make it more yellow, but this is a little bit more accurate because it has very specific temperature values. So you could use this to easily just change the colors. Now, when the temperature is turned on, there's also a tint. So you can use this tint to still customize it further. But if you turn it to a separate value, then like the two colors are kind of gonna battle each other because if I turn this way up, it's gonna be a blue color. But then if I make it yellow, you can see now it kind of just looks washed out because the two colors are kind of battling each other or mixing together but if you uncheck the temperature it'll go back to color so it's called tint with the temperature on or it's called color with the temperature off now there's also the power and that's just the general brightness of the light that feature was already in blender now there's also this exposure under the power and it appears as though it's basically doing the same thing as the power but it's actually multiplying the power you can see if I hover my mouse over the value, you can see it says it's multiplying the intensity. And so this is a really quick way to make it a lot brighter or less bright, because instead of just turning the value up, the power up, you can see I have to drag this around a lot, especially because this is a really large scene. I just added the default monkey head, so it's a pretty large scene, but the exposure is gonna multiply it, so that way it's gonna very rapidly get a lot brighter or get darker. So that's pretty useful as well. Now there's also this really cool normal feature that I'm gonna turn on, and out of all the New light settings I think this one is the most useful so if you turn on the normalize and then change the radius you can see that even though the light is getting a lot bigger the light isn't actually getting stronger so normally with the normalize turned off if the radius is smaller the light's going to be smaller so obviously it's going to be darker or if it's really big it's going to be really bright but the normalize is going to keep it at the same brightness but it's still going to get really big or really small now you might be wondering why this is useful but take a look at the shadows here between the light part of the monkey and the dark part of the monkey. Well, if I change the radius, if the radius is really big, the light is coming out from a larger surface area. So if you look here at the shadow, you can see the shadow is much more soft. But if I turn the radius down, all of the light is coming out in one small point. So you can now see the shadow on the monkey head is very sharp. And a real world example that I always like to mention is a sunny day and a cloudy day. So on a completely overcast day, there's lots of clouds. So the light is being very dispersed and everything looks more gray and things are more cloudy. However, on a really sharp sunny day, all of the light is just coming from the sun. And so if you look down at your shadow, most likely you're going to be able to see a very sharp, clear shadow. But before we have the normalized feature, if I made it bigger, I'd also have to turn the power down so I could turn the power down. But then if I wanted to make the radius smaller, let's just drag this down, then I would have to turn the power back up to make it be the same brightness. So I really like this normalized feature. I think this is going to be very useful when you're just kind of fiddling around with lights and trying to figure out what type of lighting you're going for. And if you'd like to learn about some more new features of Blender 4.5, I've been recently releasing some new videos where I go over some of the new features. So if you want to check that out, you can find my playlist in the description of new Blender features and updates. So I hope you found the video helpful and thank you for watching.